All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Ovens Garage. Today I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade the electrical system in my old 1986 Bigfoot camper. So there's two wires that are run to the passenger side of the truck where what I call the battery compartment. There's a little box on the side of the camper where it's big enough for a battery and a bunch of other storage stuff basically. So I've kind of designated that section as the battery compartment, but someone had run two wires from the converter, I think. I haven't really fully investigated how it's wired to the camper, but I know that it works because I've had a 12 volt battery in there for over a year, almost two years now, and the entire camper works off the battery. What I wanna do with this setup is I wanna rewire the existing 12 volt setup in the camper into my own upgraded system that is future-proofed for any future electrical upgrades that I wanna do, as well as I wanna make sure that it's safe because what's in there now, I'm really not sure how it's wired and it seems a little bit sketchy with some of the other things that I've seen in the camper already. So I just wanted to make sure that the system's safe and reliable for future use. Okay, here's just a quick shot of the wiring diagram of the setup that I'm gonna be using for the upgraded electrical system in my camper. If you wanna just pause the video to take a look, this includes the solar panels, the fuse block, as well as bus bars, all the correct uh, wire gauge sizes, and this assumes that the system can handle a load of up to 100 amps. All the components within, this, within the system can handle with up to 100 amps. Now, am I gonna be using up to 100 amps at the same time in the system? Most likely not, considering the entire camper, I believe is only about 15 amp uh, from the factory. Just running through the components that you'll need, I've got uh, mostly Blue Seas products. The fuse block, I'm going with a 12 circuit with negative uh, bus and cover. Um, I'm going to be using a circuit breaker that goes up to the solar panel so that way I can disconnect it from the charge controller. So that way when I have the battery disconnected from the system, the solar panels are not feeding into the charge controller. Shouldn't have the solar panels connected to your charge controller unless a battery is connected. It's just recommended. These two 100 amp capable bus bars for the positive and negative terminals. Main fuse to the battery. So this is the, um, the fuse that will cut off if the system goes abo above 100 amps. Um, keep in mind everything in the system is rated for 100 amps so this will break at 100 amps and this goes right onto the terminal of the battery. I've got some lugs of various sizes that I can use. Uh, most of the things that I'm doing here are marine grade and marine uh, capable. Uh, I I've tend to find that they're better quality and they last longer and they don't give you as many issues. Here what I'm doing I'll show you in the battery compartment is I've got a piece of plastic that I got from Industrial Plastics that I'm mounting most of the electrical items to. So I've got my charge controller here, and then I've got my circuit breaker, which is gonna act as a switch to go up to the solar panels, and that'll come in, connect to the charge controller. The feed for the charge controller has its own 20 amp fuse. It'll come up to, this'll be my positive bus bar with a whole system disconnect from the battery. That'll have a positive that goes to the battery. This will be my negative bus bar with a shunt so that I can monitor the battery system from the inside of the camper. And that'll go to the negative terminal of the battery. And then for my positive and negative bus bars, this will run to the fuse block. And this is a 100 amp capable um, fuse block that has 12 circuits, which I can run 12 different circuits of my own or the existing system in the camper. If I wanna rewire the camper, I can wire it to this and run um, all my 12 volt off of here, have everything labeled on here, knowing what it is, and manage it from all from the battery compartment instead of uh, inside the camper. Okay, so now that I've got everything laid out in a position that I want it, I'm gonna be uh, mounting everything to the plastic board using stainless steel screws and stainless hardware so that way uh, nothing will rust. Sitting lonely in my room again I'm Trying to find the words to say But nothing comes out I am looking for the better day It seem like they just stay away Whenever I try There's so many things that I keep in my mind My friends keep me out And it hurts every time With all the emotions I built up inside Oh, why can't I? Someone look for me and I disappear No matter how much that I scream, nobody hears But I see the light from far away, it's down the line Maybe I should not give up without a fight Cause there will be a time oh, oh. There will be 
Okay, so before I go any further in the battery compartment, I've discovered a little bit of rotten wood on the bottom, so I've completely pulled all the rotten wood out. I'm going to replace it um, with some new wood. Uh, I'm thinking about coating it in resin, and then I'll seal it up before I move on to installing my electrical panel up here in this corner. All my new wiring is going to go on that wall, and then the battery is going to sit here in a new battery tray screwed down to the plywood in here. And what I can do is I'll epoxy them all so that way they're waterproof and then I can epoxy them to uh, the fiberglass and to each other and seal the whole thing so that way it remains uh, watertight. All right so a bit of an update here since the last clip I have mounted in the new 12 volt uh, distribution panel. This is on towards the front of the camper. The epoxy is fully cured here, it's the next day. The new panel's mounted. What I've done is I've wired in the solar panel, that's the positive just here, and the negative just runs down into the negative um, feed for the charge controller. And the other things that I've done here are, I mounted in, I've got a six amp battery charger, so that way every time that I plug in the camper, it charges the battery, so that way when I have shore power, I know that the battery is going to be charging no matter what. And that just plugs into the fridge compartment outlet there. The other thing that I've done is just for now I've wired in a couple of circuits. I have a USB, USB charger that goes to the wall to the interior of the camper there. And the other thing that I've done is I've taken the existing DC wires from the camper and temporarily wired it to a 30 amp fuse on the fuse block until I get time to rearrange things how I want to. The other thing that I've done is I've wired in, just up top here, LED light for the battery compartment so that way I can um, turn on the light if it's dark out here and if I need some light in the battery compartment. So at this point, now I'm ready to wire in the battery. So I'm just gonna wire in um, a couple four gauge lugs there on that side and I have to mount the battery tray. Uh, but before I'm gonna do that, I'm going to put back in the factory camper tie down. So I'm going to drill a hole and use the jigsaw for the slot. All right, and so here's the final update. Um, I've got the battery hold down tray mounted. Uh, there's just four screws that I put into the wood and the battery. I've got a 100 amp fuse on the positive terminal of the battery that runs to the switch. And then I had to run the negative wire just back there to go to the battery shunt and then I also put in the camper tie down. I ended up not using epoxy and just using some flexible butyl uh, on the bottom of this as well as just down here. I've got the camper tie down back on. Here you can see the lights working now, the solar charge controller is working now, and it's showing that the solar panels are putting power to the battery and the battery is discharging some power, I'm assuming because this light's on um, just for that. A couple of other small things, this temperature sensor comes with the, the Renogy charge controller, so that just mounts, um, I just mounted that up on the ceiling here, it says to mount it as close, as close to the battery as you can. And then the other thing is this comes with a Bluetooth monitor for the premium kit, so I just uh, tucked up the wiring behind it and ran it up, and the Bluetooth uh, unit itself I've just mounted up inside my fridge compartment and so that way I can connect to it from inside the camper or outside the camper. Last thing that I did was install this vent. It's just a stainless steel vent in the door. And I did that because 
the lead acid battery when it's charging may give off some gas and I just want to make sure that there is a place for the gas to escape um, if it does give off any gas while it's charging. All right, so that wraps up the installation of the 200 watt premium kit from Renogy. Um, completely upgraded my electrical system now and I'm ready to go camping. Try it out. Thanks for watching. Cheers.